Thank you, comrades. Amanda. Long live the spirit of Chris Honey. Long live. Long live the spirit of Mama Winnie Mandela. Long live. Long live the spirit of O.R. Tambo. Long live. Good morning. I would like to acknowledge the executive mayor of Ekuhuleni, Mr. Mzwandile Masina, Minister Natim Tetwa, Secretary General of the SACP, Mr. Bladen Zimand, Head of the Elections, Mr. Fikile Mbalul, the Ekuhu, members of Ekuhuleni Municipality, the Tambo family, our friends and family, and everyone who made an effort to attend today's commemoration, all protocol observed. This has been a difficult and extremely sad week for all of us, but especially for the family of Mama Winnie Madiki Zela Mandela. My thoughts, love, and prayers are with them. It has not gone unnoticed by me that Daddy dies on Easter Saturday, or Mama Winnie dies on Easter Monday, or Tata O.R. died also at the end of April. I think and believe that O Daddy is calling all his favorites during this time, so if I was the leaders, I would begin to pray. My father loved Mama Winnie, and she loved him as well. As a child coming to South Africa from Lesotho, um, we was, it was incredibly overwhelming. We didn't know what to expect, and there was some anxiety when our parents told us we would be staying with Mama Winnie and her family in Soweto. This was not a stranger's name. We grew up hearing about Umama Wini, and you could hear the love and respect in my father's voice when he spoke about her. We would be shown images of her, and just like every single person, I was mesmerized by her beauty, but more especially by her strength. Her name would come up when Udedi would tell his girls that there is nothing we cannot do once we put our minds together, and that we are just as strong and powerful as boys, if not more so and she would be illustrated as that example. Driving into Soweto and finding our way to Orlando, the knot in my stomach intensified. As we drove through the streets of history and turned the corners of promise, we reached Umama Winnie's house. I could not tell you what she was wearing that day, but I can tell you that I was wrapped up in the biggest embrace. In her signature rasp, she told me, darling, call me big mommy. She proceeded to introduce my sisters and I to her grandchildren, who equally swept us up in welcome. This was a family used to enveloping people up in genuine love and affection. It felt like home, so much so that my late sister Kwezi broke protocol and acted the way my father used to say heathen-ish and began to believe she's a member of the family and fought with some of the grandkids. There have been so many things said about Umama we need this week that honestly I have found quite unpalatable. Whether it's in the media or leaders, even by those that feel they are defending her. Umama Winnie does not need defending. Her actions are the reason that I can stand here as an independent, strong, and unapologetic black woman. Not only did she keep the home fires burning, she collected the wood and she lit that fire. She was fearless. Personally, I can't do it later with Mama Winnie anymore. In Mama Winnie's words, I am not sorry. I will never be sorry. I will do everything I did again if I have to. Everything. And she has nothing to be sorry about. Last week, to participate and witness the beauty of social media with the hashtag, I am Winnie Mandela, was monumental. South African women were donning black with a duke was such an inspirational movement that reminded me that together we are strong. That together as women standing together, anything is possible. That Umama did not die, but she did multiply. I am Winnie Mandela. My daughter is Winnie Mandela. And all the little girls who dream big are Winnie Mandela. It might be a system that is old as time and ingrained in our society, but as sure as I'm Lindua Hani, the daughter of Tembi Sile, Chris Honey, Patriarchy, we are coming for you. Watinta Bafazi, Watinta Mbogoto. Apartheid, apartheid was not kind, and I'm putting it mildly. And we are told every day how we need to get over it. 
As I stand a few feet from my father's grave, I am very clear that I'll never get over it. And to those people saying that I, to those people saying that, saying that particular thing we should get over it, I think they need to exercise a whole lot of empathy, sensitivity, and just take a step off that pedestal of privilege to acknowledge and accept what we went through. Moreover, they should never get over it. It was the darkest time of this country, and the healing, working through it, should be a collective effort, and not just one for the previously, and a lot of people still currently oppressed of this country. It is our collect painful collective history. We must own it, embrace it, and work through it. I think forgiveness and reconciliation was thrust upon us before we were ready. I am yet to recollect the apartheid government as a whole apologizing for those atrocities. I find it is difficult to forgive something that even the perpetrators have not even acknowledged. I look at what is happening in our society today and the rampant racism that we are still to tackle. I don't think we should necessarily be where we are. And to have our children who are not even born during apartheid to feel the way they do tells me we have our work cut out for us. The hatred is real in our world and we cannot ignore it anymore. It has been 25 years since Dedi was brutally assassinated in his driveway. And to some, including myself, it feels like yesterday. Our family still miss him every day and we will forever reflect on how our lives would have been different if he was still alive. A sentiment I know shared by many. Honestly, I will never know, but I do feel I tend to miss the leadership I grew up surrounded by. The pure selflessness, selflessness of our Hanis, of our tumbles that they displayed. The concept of the cause being larger than the individual. We were fed this simultaneously as we were told, or if you like, indoctrinated, that our blood is black, green, and yellow. 25 years later, we seem to have forgotten those basics. We need, and myself included, to stop looking for saviors and realize that we all carry the gene of superb leadership. We are surrounded by greatness and inspiration. From the women who take menial jobs to feed her family to the young children still walking many kilometers to get an education, we are the ones to lead our beautiful country to the kind of future we want to see. This past year, I have publicly shared my story and opened up mine and my family's lives. I have shared my demons, pain, and joy, and how it has felt to grow up as Chris Honey's daughter. I am beyond humbled at the love and acceptance I have received, and I want to thank the South African people from all walks of life who have embraced me with no judgment. I often tell the story of how when people first realize I'm Chris Honey's daughter, the first thing they share with me is where they were on the 10th of April, 1993. And in the past, I used to resent that and as I felt that I always had to relive the most painful moment of my life. I now understand that it was never done with malice, but the people were letting me know that my pain is their pain and that I am not alone. That is the beauty and the graciousness of our people. You guys have carried us, the Honey family, on your shoulders in your hearts and in your prayers for 25 years. I am here today because of that overwhelming support. We love you and we thank you always, South Africans. May God bless South Africa. May God bless her leaders and keep her strong. Long live the spirit of Chris Honey, long live. Thank you.